Avita Zing, Mr. Darko. Avita Zing. Happy pre Super Bowl Sunday to channel listening fans. Welcome back to the channel. What do I have for you today? Well, I have for you kids this Unison Research Unico P, not Primo, P integrated hybrid amplifier. Now, I know you've seen it before early on when I started this channel. I've had this for I've had this for five months now. And with that, I think it's uh, it's overdue that I give it its prop, uh, proper introduction to everybody, not to mention a full-on review of this integrated amplifier from Italy. Unison Research. If you guys like specs, if you guys like charts, don't bother going to their website. Unison Research. Very interesting company. Uh, lots of products. So this particular integrated amplifier, when it came out in about 2000, from what I could tell, 2007, 2008, it was the entry level of 14, 14 amplifiers. They like to make amplifiers at, uh, at Unison Research, and they like to give you as little information on them as possible. Sometimes we take risks. Sometimes we just say, hey, you know what, what the hell? A nice little tube integrated amplifier from Italy? Why not? Here's the lowdown on this particular unit. This is a 50 watt per channel hybrid. So it has a, a tube stage, a 12 UA7 in the preamp, just one and it's a MOSFET driver um, output stage for those 50 watts. It is a Spartan chart. The other piece to this thing is that it has 14 dB of feedback built into it. When it comes to the dampening factor, we're talking like some 1970s Macintosh gear here. This has only a 60 factor of of um, feedback. <laughs> it comes in at 25 pounds. Not bad for its size. It's got a nice beefy little toroidal transformer in there. And it has five inputs basically. So you've got, uh, it has the phono option, CD, an AV throughput, a tuner, and a tape deck. Why did I pick this particular unit? Now, for those of you out there who still don't understand my channel, I'm a budget used buyer. Yes, I have bought some new equipment and I actually have a brand new custom pair of speakers on the way from Poland. However, 90% of everything I'm gonna review on this channel is something I bought used that I feel is a hidden gem. However, what piqued my interest with this particular unit that I got from the music room was this sucker already came loaded with the Stage 2 upgrades from Parts Connection of Canada. Chris over there at Parts Connection of Canada had a laundry list of upgrades to the board. So I'm just going to do the highlights. It has the Vampire Gold RCA inputs. Uh, I'm sorry. Yeah, inputs just just the one set that you will see in the pictures that I'll provide in a little a little video walk around of this unit. It has the um, RE caps in the preamp stage. It has um, additional rectifiers. It has some viches. It has a Mullard CV four thousand three in the tube uh, in the tube stage of the preamp. Maybe I already said that. Um, the least favorite upgrade for me is the sorbethane feet 
And the reason I say the least uh, favorite is because it just doesn't play well with my audio rack. It's, I've had Cerberthane feet ruin the urethane finish on my audio racks. Just for any of you out there who, who uh, don't know that, Cerberthane feet does not like particular wood finishes with the kind of oils or um, poly blends that are on them. It has a quad set of the gold WBT7, WBT, uh, 763 uh, speaker posts. And because I have experience with rolling op amps and some DAX prior, especially with uh, Eastern Electric, this has, the, this has two Burr Brown 627 op amps in the, the driver stage. Uh, clipped into there with its uh, the, the eight pins and <clears throat> sorry that to me is probably what's lending the most to the sound signature of this integrated I have to say that I'm going to upset my my American viewers for a moment and being a little critical of our love affair of paper specs I would admit that a few years ago, if I looked at the very simple paper specs that I will post, it's very spartan and drab and leaves you wanting for more information on something that was a $1,200 unit when it came out. The Stage 2 upgrades from Parts Connection alone were $1,200 for this particular unit. And so I was able to get this unit for a thousand fifty bucks, and so therefore I got all of the. To my mind, I feel like I got all of the stage two upgrades for free buying this this unit used. Now it's it's in amazing condition. I love this remote that it stands up the way it does, and the fact that it's a metal plate with a nice carved wood, and it's it's held up very well. Uh, feels good. Very tactile. And for the price point, it's it's quite beautiful for what it is. You know, it's not a cheesy little credit card remote that comes with so many of the the budget line integrateds today. But that's off that's off what I was going to say about my American viewers and their love affair with specs. It's just like in the car world. You want to know the horsepower. You want to know the torque. You want to know your zero to sixty, your slalom, your quarter mile. Blah 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 blah. And there are folks out there that think, ooh, I've got a 125 watt per channel AV receiver. That'll smoke your 35 watt per channel tube amplifier. Doesn't work that way, guys. It just, they're, all watts are not created equal. And in the case of this Unico P, that 100% stands true. Here's the other thing with, with me being a, a, a used gear reviewer trying to find those hidden gems out there. You're probably wondering, oh, I haven't said a darn word about this Champagne Marantz that's underneath it yet. I was throwing a curveball with this particular Marantz. Now, it's on loan to me, and I, I, was, I was really looking forward to reviewing this PM11 S1. It's the first gen of the big integrateds from Marantz when they started making some changes. And this is a, a 2006 model. When this came out, this was $4,500 in the Marantz lineup. It was their top of the line at that time, $4,500. It's 100 watts per channel, and it has a plethora of inputs and outputs on the back. It's got a really good moving magnet in there. It's got a... Um, you can use it as a you can use it as a full-on preamp. It has XLR. It has the balanced um, inputs. Can do a lot. But here's the thing, guys. I mentally shut down with this this integrated amplifier, and so much so that that's all I'm pretty much going to say from this this point forward. Is that first and foremost. I look for gear that's not only a hidden gem, but it's also going to mesh well with my speakers, particularly my reference speakers. As of a couple weeks ago, the Zoo Dirty Weekends are my preferred reference speaker in this space. And it did not have a good synergy with the Marantz. So much so that 
within uh, an hour of listening, I, I was done. I was absolutely done. I could not take it anymore. It was too thin. It was too hollow. I tried a few different things and I just plugged the, the Unison the Unison research back in and said, I, I'm not reviewing the Morants. I, I, I am not the kind of person or I'm not the kind of reviewer who will change my speakers to match what my front end is. It's For me, it's the opposite. My front end has to work with my speakers. And in this case, my preference is the Zoo Dirty Weekends, the Mark IIs. So I'm not going to sit there and play this game where, oh, I need to go find speakers that are going to work well with the Morantz. F no, that's not going to happen. Here's the other here's the other curveball for this this review is that I need to do justice to saying okay well yeah the the zoo omens I I recognize that the dirty weekends are a 98 dB efficient speaker super efficient speaker you can easily get away with cranking those things out with a, a 15 watt tube amplifier so it's no sweat that even though this has 50 watts it will play those things to reference level all day long. Serendipity came into play, and my buddy Dave at, at Authentic Audio of Idaho happened to just get his hands on the Sierra Ones, Sierra Acoustic Ones. What a... I can't wait to talk about those in, in the coming weeks. However, they are the opposite of the Zeus. 86 dB efficiency, dropping down even to 85, I believe, in the anechoic chamber. Don't quote me on that one, but they are not efficient speakers. However, I left the dial right where it's at of where my reference listening playback is in my space with the Unison Research and the Sierra Ones because I wanted to illustrate how powerful the 50 watts are in this integrated amplifier. The Italians have a good sense of humor and they must like Spinal Tap because this volume dial has 11 spots on it. It has 11 spots on it. I have it trapped or stuck right at the fourth spot. So for those of you who are a little challenged, that's 36% of, of the volume range used on this integrated. This thing is a diesel truck. And I say a diesel truck in the fact that on paper, if we're talking the watts or the horsepower, it's torque to pull these speakers goes on for days. Super, absolutely friggin' impressive. The, the, the killer reference track that I used at 36% on the dial or level four on the dial for you guys, is that the I played uh, Patricia Barber, Cafe Blue, the Son Nardis because I love at I love the, the the drum solo that starts to kick in after four minutes and then it just goes on and it's all over the place. That bass that's hitting and it this you're you're going along with it and the room is shaking and that's what the Sierras. I mean, just impressive little speakers. So I've got this room shaking at about obscene levels being in an apartment and I was texting Dave going Dave not only are these Sierras stupid good but I'm thinking to myself it just shows that the 50 watts versus the 100 watts can be that difference guys and I it makes me feel bad for the Unison Research Group, they've been around for 20 years and they make a lot of really good looking products. I'd love to have some of their tube integrated amplifiers and they have some high efficiency speakers that I would like to get my hands on as well. But they just, I'm going to say as an American, they don't give you a whole lot of information to go off of and so naturally our predisposition to wanting to see a whole host of specs and know that oh, we can compare it to this and oh it's going to outdo that that particular product most of americans will probably just gloss over it as hell no i don't i don't want to try those products they look like they're they're too low too low on the totem pole as far as their their power output i wanted something that 
that I could show that at, at, at half power, you can still get an amazing integrated amplifier at an amazing budget price at today's dollars. Now, you know, for those of you who want to spend a thousand dollars out there for something newer, there are some pretty good choices. You, the first one that comes to my mind is, you know, going to be the um, the Sphinx from Rogue Audio. If you want uh, another well-to-do hybrid integrated amplifier, so you know that's that's another good choice. You have Peachtree out there. There's so many of those available on Audiogon and eBay at any given time, and you're going to get a lot of Class D horsepower out of that with a two buffer stage. But since I've owned some peach trees with the two buffer stage, I can do this comparison to where the peach trees hold no candle to the actual true class A preamp stage in the unison where in the peach trees when you click on the little button to have that tube buffer come on you instantaneously hear a closing in of the sound stage and I've owned three different peach trees to where when you click that button it shrinks a little bit it softens a little bit and it's like you've dimmed the lights just a little bit and it's kind of jarring because you're just like, what, what just happened? Did I have a power fluctuation? No, that's, that's the way they implement it, just throwing a two buffer stage onto uh, what's you know class D output um, circuits. Not necessarily the most elegant thing, but when properly administered a, a, a tube preamp into the circuits and it's built around that, you have something to work with here. And with the, the Dirty Weekends, I never once thought, man, it's only got a, a 60 factor of dampening. And I'm used to my, my Red Dragons, which have like dampening of over a thousand. No problem whatsoever on all the different varieties of music. Not to the level mind you, of my $8,000 preamp and my $2,200 Class D monoblocks. But embarrassingly close, I can, I, can, I can freely admit that all the money used I spent on my full independent front end versus the money I've put into this integrated, or what I bought it for, I should say, it's embarrassingly close to where I would give it a 80% to within the performance of, of my top shelf gear. Missing only 20% at one third the price, mind you. One third the price, 80% of the way there. Now I don't, you know, I don't have test measurements, guys. I don't have all that stuff yet. Some, some, several of you have been asking me for, well, can you do an in-room frequency range and blah 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 blah. As this channel grows and I can afford it and I get to my next house, absolutely, where I have a bigger, bigger space, I plan to do all that. At least get near field and some gated responses with the speakers, so that I can share that with you guys. Right now, I have my ears. I have some test tones that I that I play on a regular basis. I have consistent music choices and you know, you're going to have to just kind of go with me when I say your mileage may vary. I've shared with you the the small space that this apartment is and you know, there just has to be a a grain of salt, mind you, that you take when watching pretty much all reviewers that aren't sitting there operating everything from an anechoic chamber. Now, if you just want to sit there and make all of your gear choices based on scientific specs and based on what the analysis say, well, good luck if you think all of that equally translates into perfect sound staging and perfect you know, pace and rhythm and timing, sweetness versus analytical or sharp or thin, or, you know, Say whatever, you know, could add all of these, these illustrious words to the mix. Good reviewers can help you narrow your focus on using us to say, hey, these are our preference and these are the sandboxes that we play in. 
I make no bones about the fact that I'm a lively speaker loving guy. So for all of you who are newer to my channel and been watching me, my channel revolves around lively speakers. My channel revolves around tectons and zoo audio. So the, the guys who like the perfect analysis and perfect curves of their charts, you're going to not probably agree with most of what I say, as I've seen uh, the guys on Audio Science Review who hate zoo speakers because, oh, look at their, you know, their ugly charts and their frequency responses are all over the place. Those are the worst measuring speakers I've ever seen. Well, you know, um, the Autophiliac seems to like them a whole lot. And Shraj over at uh, Six Moons, that's his speaker of choice. I could go on and on of guys who have some zoos in their closet. So, uh, you know, sucks to be you if that's if you're going to go off of somebody else's chart and not ever use your own ears to decipher and decide what you like. Guys, how the fudge do you know if you never try this stuff? And that's what this is all about. That's what I do. That's why I love swapping in pieces to get the, you know, the flavor. Specs tell you so much, but let this be proof positive that a 50 watt integrated amplifier can absolutely way more than suffice in an apartment setting. Got off on a little bit of a tangent there. Got a little excited. Got a little excited for my American brethren and going off on specs and charts and frequency ranges and, oh, this can't be any good because of this or that. My apologies. I'll take it down a couple of notches for a moment. So, did I, do I love my Unison Research Unico P for what it is at 50 watts per channel? I do. Does it do what I want it to do at 50 watts per channel? It does. Does it work well with the zoos? It works fantastic with the zoos and it drove the living crap out of the Sierra Ones that'll, that'll be in the future. Comparing it back and forth with my, my top shelf products that I have, it doesn't have, it does not have the, the bottom registers. It does not have the absolute, yes, it does not have the absolute base control of the Class D monoblock amplifiers, but there's so little of that extra information missing that for around $1,000, it's a no brainer if you are working with a startup system because you don't have to pay for all the extra cables. You don't have to pay for, you know, if you're into that with the power cables. One cable, a DAC source, and this integrated, and you will have a very nice sound system in your room on a very good budget versus buying anything brand new. It has the pace, it has the rhythm, it has a very nice sound stage. And I go back to the Patricia Barber Nardis uh, track once again, because it did have a different aspect to it that tubes do do. And it's not to get fluffy and fuzzy and, and soft and, and nice and warm in the middle range. It's just that, you know, there is a, a texture. There's a texture that tubes always lend to your music. And when you have high efficiency, lively speakers like Zoo Audio or Tecton or some of the other really high efficient Tannoys, they respond really well to tubes. Tubes help with a texture and with odd order harmonics. I find that odd order harmonics, like many listeners, you know, it lends a, a smoothness 
to the presentation, where even order harmonics can always be characterized as a bit harsh or hard. And, you know, in this particular case, with my preferences, every now and then I have to throw some tubes into the system to remind me of how good the other side of high efficiency speakers act when they have that, when you allow them to show you the different texture characteristics that they can portray. That's where with your science, your audio science review guys struggle to show me how do you translate that into your frequency ranges on your charts? How do you show me that mid-range smoothness on a spectrum decay? Now, if somebody can point to me, point that out to me, what that looks like on frequency charts, on spectrum decay, decay charts, I'm here to learn. Please email me. I would love to see you scientifically show me how a good tube amplifier can perform and sound good against its solid state brethren. I think that's more than fair. For those of you who are uh, who don't like reviewers going based off of just we tell you what our opinions are without actual measurement tools in the room to show you what those frequency ranges are. So, the Unison P stays with me. It's been five months now. It is my backup amplifier and I really love it with the zoos. I think it's a I think it's a great fallback for me. I'm I'm fortunate enough to have a fallback amplifier. For those of you out there who are looking for your first true step up integrated, you don't have to spend two thousand, three thousand, or forty five hundred dollars to get something that sounds really good if you're willing to buy something you know 10, 15 years older that's been well taken care of. Those exist out there. So I recommend so far Unison Research products. This is the baby. You can only go up from there. And uh, as of today, from their hybrids, their hybrid offerings, they have six other integrated amplifiers that go up from there in price. I do plan to get my hands on some of those when I can and to see what those step up in prices and circuit boards doubling of the tubes, what that all looks like in the future. Other updates. For the zoo fans out there, here they are guys. I told you I was going to order them. I have them. Why am I holding them and they're not in the speakers yet? Because I also got the zoo feet. I posted those on Instagram last weekend. I've been living with the zoos with just the feet on the dirty weekend so far because Heck, you know, with vibration control, I just wanted to get a, a feel for that. I'm not missing anything. It did maybe thin the bass out just the slightest a bit in room so far, but I wanted to I wanted to make sure that I got acclimated to what if any changes would the feet do and naturally the expectation was that with the bottom finger port loading design of the dirty weekends and the, the feet raising it just slightly up would have a tiny impact to the sonic si signature of the bass. So now that after a full week of listening to them like that and fully aware of what that small difference is, tomorrow I will install these and let these play out all week long and see if there's any real value to this versus just having left in the pulse caps. So that's a small update for you zoo fans out there. And I hope everybody has a very safe, enjoyable Super Bowl Sunday tomorrow. Don't eat too much garbage. And everybody, be nice to one another. We need, you know, we need, uh, we need more love in the world. Thank you and have a great day.